Welcome to CBS Radio Mystery Theater Archives, the only YouTube channel which has the original classic episodes of the CBS Radio Mystery Theater in order with no ads. Thank you for listening, and now, enjoy the show. G. Marshall. Webster's definition of coincidence is, in part, a group of concurrent events remarkable from lack of apparent casual connection. That's quite a mouthful. Somehow it seems to me a simpler definition might be that coincidence makes half, at the very least, of the best stories in the world possible. This, then, is a story founded on people and the accident of coincidence. Sergeant Quinn, we've got to nab him soon before he meets some babe who won't go his route and he flips bad enough to wipe her out. Well, you suppose Lieutenant, his wife, if he's got one, knows what danger she's in? What I wonder is, does this guy know how sick he is? <laughs> mystery drama, A Model Murderer, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Ian Martin and stars Larry Haynes and Marion Seldes. I'll be back shortly with Act One. The world is filled with men of all stripes and colors driven by an inner compulsion to maintain a macho image, not so much for the world at large, but for themselves. Such a one is Lou Richmond, appliance salesman. At first glance, not such a glamorous business. But then, at first glance, neither is Lou. Except that, uh, for some inexplicable reason, this 40-odd-year-old man with a receding hairline and slightly paunching has his own special magic with women. And the luck of the devil getting away with it until... But uh, that's the story, isn't it? Excuse me. But will you just permit me to say how exquisitely lovely you are? How can I stop you? You've already said it. You know, I've been watching you from the other side of the bar. <laughs> watching. My eyes have been glued. It would have been hard not to be aware of it. Particularly since the bartender tells me you bought me this. Oh, the drink. <laughs> you haven't tasted it yet. I don't usually accept drinks from strangers. And one is my limit, anyway. Why, you don't have to drink it. I'm sorry if I was out of line. It was only meant to be a gesture to beauty, which I hadn't meant to follow up. Forgive me. Mm, I should say thank you. I, I didn't mean to be ungracious. Oh, you couldn't be ungracious if you tried. Uh, you come on very strong, don't you? Well, I didn't mean to. It's just that as a professional photographer, my eye always leaps and is caught by the exceptional. But I should leave you. You're obviously waiting for someone. <laughs> waiting is the right word. It's become a rather annoying avocation. Well, I just can't believe any man would stand you up. It wouldn't be the first time. I don't think I'm going to give him the chance again. Uh, you said photographer. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I should introduce myself. My name is Philip Evemont. The Philip Evemont? Well, I guess so. No, I really am flattered. I mean, oh, my name is Christine Pollock. Won't you sit down? Well, if you're sure you want me to. I'm the one who has been stood up. I don't see why you should be, too. And uh, I'll drink to you, to your matchless beauty. Now, don't say anything. Just accept. Like any goddess, you're due. <laughs> you're a bit much, you know. I have trouble with honesty. No one believes the truth. Now, wait a minute. I have heard some expert lines in my time. No, it's but... no lie, Miss Pollock. Except my lifeline. You know, without subjects to bring it to life, my camera is no more than an object. I risk anything to give it the opportunity to live. You think of me as a, a, a model? Well, what else? 
You know, I could make you the number one model in the country within six months. Oh, I'd like to believe that. Oh, you can, you can. What do you do? Here in Washington? What else? I'm an executive secretary. Yeah, but you have models. You can't tell me you haven't. That's right, I have, but I didn't quite cut it. Well, that's because you didn't have the right photographer. Would you, uh, like to take another whirl at it? Well, yes. Anything rather than what I'm doing now. Uh, would you like to, uh, talk it over as a business proposal? As a business proposal? Mm -hmm. Yes. Good. Well, uh, this is hardly the place, but, uh, see, I'll be gone by tomorrow morning. And you say you have a date. I had a date, Mr. Evemont. I consider it broken as of five minutes ago. Ah. Well, then, uh, suppose we go up to my room and, uh, discuss your future. Your room? Yeah, as I said, this isn't the place, and you know who I am. Yes, sir. I realize I may not get a break like this again. I don't have that kind of money. I don't have any money at all. Well, there's got to be some way to raise it. If you can get me work, I'll plow back every cent I make. Yeah, I know, I know, I know, baby, and I'd help out, but you have to have something to make a start. I mean, it's got to be L.A. or New York for the big run. You need a wardrobe and just to be there. Now, I'll spring for film and studio, but I can't run it all. I know. I couldn't expect you to. But I just don't have the money. Yeah. Well, it was a good try. Well, does that have to be the end of it? No, no, no. Not as far as we're concerned. Uh, we can talk it all out again tomorrow. Meantime, meantime, uh... We can have a ball together and live it up, huh? Well, not just a minute, Mr. Emo. Now, let's make it so. Let's huh? make it nothing. This was strictly a business proposition, you said. Yeah, that's right. No. Look, look, I, I, I'm not interested. Yeah, but I am, so let's get with it, huh? You let me go, or, or I'll break. No. You better not try that, kid. I could mess you up. I could break your arm. What are you talking about? You and me, and why you're here. Now, shut up if you know what's good for you. From now on, I call the turn. I'm in charge. Yeah? Who? Oh, sure. Put him on. Uh, hello. Uh, this is Lieutenant Matthews, 45th Precinct. Who's there? A Detective Sergeant Bill Quinn, D.C. Police. I just wanted to cross-check with you in New York. It looks like we got Phil the Flash on the loose again down here. You sure, Sergeant? Well, Mike, it, uh, it's his style of operating. How much did he take this babe for? Well, nothing in cash, but she got beat up pretty bad. Now, he's got to be nailed before he goes for something big. You get any further make on him? Same description, nothing new. I'm uh, sending up all the poop by Telex for cross-reference. How do you figure him, Mike? You think he's some kind of a kinky sex fiend? Well, I'm, I'm not all that big in psychology. What kind of weird are you figure him married to? Oh, no, not so weird. Just strong. Too tough for him to crack. Strong? How? Who knows? Mentally, I doubt physically. Uh, maybe she holds the purse strings. Well, so, so what's the answer? Just that we gotta nab him soon before he meets some babe and he flips bad enough to wipe her out completely. I wonder if his wife, if he's got one, knows what danger she's in. Well, I wonder. It's like a, a hobby with me, see? I mean, other guys go for antique cars or old stamps and like that. I go for women. Now, what's so bad about that? I mean, beautiful women. I always had them, even before Phoebe. Half the fun is the line, the technique, the way to break them down. They all go for my line. I never figure them not to. And I can use the dough. Phoebe sure keeps me on a short leash and demands the old paycheck right on the line. So a guy's got to have a little outside income somewhere, right? Sometimes I have to laugh. She only knew. I mean, like, if she only knew how close she is from the truth and how far.
I thought you were supposed to be on the late shuttle last night, Lou. Well, you know how it is with business feet. These things came up. What things? You really want to hear? I really would, for once. If it was the truth. Now, that's what knocks me. What? Always the needle. You, can, you don't believe me. No. Huh? Well, that's that. Not quite. Let's lay it right on the line, Lou. I've had it up to here. I want a divorce. Oh, that's nice. You want me to give you one? That's right. You've lived off me for too long. Now, wait a minute, Phoebe. No, not even an instant. I've had it. You can go tomcatting around all you want. I don't care anymore. But you better take care. Because you're not going to have it so free and easy from now on, one way or another. I'm keeping tabs on you. All right, what does that mean? You better look out for your pickups. Because sooner or later I'll find you out and I'll stick you, my big macho butterfly. When we break up finally, you're going to take all the blame. I didn't have any particular answer, except to coast. Phoebe is independently wealthy, and it's a wise man who knows which side his bread is buttered on. Except, except who could have figured Athena? Oh, that was the thing that blew everything six ways from nowhere. Athena, the goddess of justice. But who knew she would weigh the scales on me? It started out just like usual. Excuse me. Um, would you just permit me to say how exquisitely lovely you are? Should I? Just because you tried to buy me a drink? No, the drink was a gesture. My statement was a compulsion. After all, I am at best half a man. How is that again? Well, the other half of me is my camera. Insatiable, demanding, never satisfied with anything less than perfection. So... When I see it with both eyes... Are you trying to tell me you're a photographer? I am. Well, it's a small world. I'm a model. Oh, really? Uh, professional? Of course. Well, not quite yet. It's a little difficult in Youngstown to get started. That's why I came to New York. Ah, perhaps I can help. Uh, may I introduce myself? You've gone this far. Why not? Well, my name is Philip Evemont. Yours? Athena Blackwell. I mean, that's the name I'm going to use when I... Evemont? Not the Philip Evemont. Well, I suppose I'd have to say yes to that. But you're one of the most famous photographers in the world. Well, I've been very lucky. Because I know how to pick the right subjects to make me look good, to make me successful. Like you. You want to photograph me? No, not only to photograph you, too. Create you. Create me? Yeah. Well, that was a clumsy way of saying it. What I meant is, I want to evoke your personality so it shines with your beauty. I see you in, in ethereal creations, the sheerest of satins and silks, molding you and yet concealing you. Why? I mean, there's so much expense involved, isn't there? Well, would it be too much to pay to become the top model in the country? I could make you that in six months. The top model? Mm -hmm. well, I have a little money saved up, but I don't think it would be enough. Yeah, uh, how much? It's so expensive to live in New York. There isn't so much left. About... Thirty-five hundred dollars. Well, we'll just have to make it do. <laughs> Where are you living now? Oh, I have a furnished room in Queens. It isn't the best place, but it's reasonable. Yeah, now look, we've got to move you out of there right away. We'll check you into the Savoy region. The uh, address is very important. Now we've got to start creating a wardrobe for you tomorrow, and I'll help you shop. And then we'll see about building you a portfolio. But look, this is no place to talk business, is it? Why don't we uh, go up to my room? Oh, uh, I don't know. I... This is moving awfully fast. Well, that's the way with success when you get a chance to grab it. How do I know that? I mean, I mean, I may have been alone at a bar, but I'm not a pickup. No, we're talking about a career. Or don't you want one? Yes. Well... Let's uh, forget any personal relationship, okay? Let's just consider how lucky it is we ran into each other and what a huge business success. If we handle it right, we can make it together. Now, shall we go upstairs? Plan the future. I had her hooked. And OB 
obediently, she came upstairs. Thirty-five hundred bucks was a nice little bundle. And for the ten days I had to spend in New York, it would serve us very nicely. The fringe benefits would come soon enough. It's a nice little setup, I thought. How the devil could I know it was the beginning of disaster? Oh, what a tangled web we weave when first we practice to deceive, said Sir Walter Scott. He might have had this whole affair in mind, for what has happened so far is simple compared to what is to come. And with those further revelations, I shall return shortly to bring you Act Two. Some people never learn, and Lou Richmond is typically one of them. This little masquerade he's conducting in New York proves to be the last straw for his long-suffering wife, Phoebe. And the new chapter in his life story that he has opened may very well prove to be his last. And not only because his wife has decided to close the book on him. I just can't take it anymore, Dennis. So I'm going to lower the boom. I'm going to take your advice. Well, it's about time, sis. The only thing that gravels me is that it's going to be expensive. My own brother's going to run up legal fees on this? No, no, don't be silly. But your little brother, Dennis, can't afford to go skip-hopping around the country like the crumb you marry. Oh, his firm pays for that. Yeah, but they won't pay for me to keep tabs on him. They don't care what else he sells as long as he moves their merchandise. And the expense I'm talking about is uh, private detectives. Oh, do we have to use those? I hate anybody else knowing any of my private business. Well, that's one of the things that that heel Lou counts on. But if you want to nail him, it's the only way. Uh, where is Charm Boy now? New York. Uh, you know where he's staying? No, he's careful never to let me know. Well, you can find out from the company he works for. I doubt it. They're all very buddy-buddy there, and the word seems to be out if any of the little women call, clam up. Anyway, it's too late to catch him on this trip. He's due back tomorrow. Well, when's his next one? I don't know. Yeah. Well, let me know the moment you do, and I'll get a detective agency on his tail. Damn good thing I didn't know what was going on back home in Cleveland with my old lady, because... I was sure having enough trouble on my hands with this babe Athena in New York. Like she acted dumb enough to have bells ringing in her head. The only trouble is, before she shelled out her dough, she wanted me to be listening to him, too. Plus, the entertainment tab was running up out of sight. And so far, that was all out of my pocket. Yeah? Yeah, What? What's the matter with you? Don't you recognize your own name? Uh, yeah, yeah, of course. My, uh, my mind was somewhere else for the moment. Tell me something, Phil. Mm, if I can. It's a bit late to be asking, but are you married? Me? <laughs> you got to be kidding. Oh, no, I'm not. Not one bit. Well, the answer is no, baby. And where do you live? Well, you know, uh, a photographer's life on the go all the time... I, uh, I got a pad in L.A., the hotel suite here in New York. In Europe, I sponge on friends who are happy to have me around. You know, Khan, Antique, London, Paris, wherever the smart people gravitate. You're so famous, I'm surprised that right here in New York, nobody yet has walked up to you and recognized you as the Philip Eastman. Well, that's because I'm the man behind the camera. They see the women I've made the glamour queens, not me. Just as they'll remember you, not me. When I make your face known around the world. Phil? Yeah? You are going to make me a glamour queen, aren't you? Oh, you know it, Athena, honey. But when do we start making the pictures for my portfolio? Oh, hey, 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 first things first, huh? Now we gotta get you settled at the right address, and we gotta build that wardrobe. Uh, the apartment deal's all set, and the couture place is holding all those clothes. Uh, when are we going to lock everything up? It's so much money. Almost all I have. Is that all that worries you? I'll call the coast tomorrow and have them transfer some of my funds. You mean you'd be willing to cover it all? Well, why not? After all, my interest in you is a little more than just professional. How much more? Well, uh, let's settle up here and go back to my hotel suite. I can explain 
So much better there. Oh, Phil, I want to believe you. I want to believe you so much. Hey, what was that? When someone took a flashlight picture. Something for your scrapbook. A moment to remember. Practically instant results in less than 15 seconds. Well, who I... told you to snap it? Was it you, Athena? No, no, I had nothing. Oh, you can tear that up right now, flash gun, Casey. Don't you want to see it first? No. Oh, Phil, please, can't we just look at it? There's the bell, warm as love. Mmm, you make a nice couple. Oh, it is a good picture. Can't we have it? Oh, all right. Here. I'll get you change, sir. I'll uh, keep it and blow. Yes, sir. But give me that. Please don't tear it up. Okay, okay. I'll shove it in my wallet. It's a nice picture, Phil. W we do make a nice couple. Yeah. Come on, let's get out of here. My place. Where you can really relax. <laughs> Lieutenant Matthews, 45th Precinct. Who? Sergeant Quinn? From Washington. Oh, yeah, sure. Put him on. What? Right outside in the squad room. Well, send him in. Send him in. <laughs> How do you like that? Speak of the devil. <laughs> Bill Quinn. That's me, Lieutenant Matthews. Well, it's Mike to you. Come on in. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Well, what brings you to New York? Oh, I ran a prisoner up to turn over to your headquarters downtown. Figured as long as I was here, I'd drop in and meet you in person. Well, that's great. Here, grab yourself a seat. Uh, prisoner? Not our boy. <laughs> Feel the flash? No, more's the pity. We ran into a complete dead end on him. Yeah, I know. <clears throat> Funny thing, uh, coincidence, you know. I was just going over his file. That's one reason I dropped by to meet you. That guy kind of niggles around in the back of my mind. You, uh, you got anything new on him up here? No, no, no. He just seems to be laying low for a while. Well, maybe he ran out of gas or, or got the call. Oh, no, 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 not this boy. He'll be back. He's like all of them. They get a good thing going, and they just got to run it into the ground. <laughs> they never know when to quit. What's so good about it? He don't clean up that much. Well, he don't do so bad, neither. Here. Let's see, uh, we've collated everything we've been able to off the wires. Uh, Chicago 74, Iris Coliseo, $1,500, and aggravated assault. Uh, 75, Marion Shettle, 500, no other charges. Two ladies in 76, another couple of grand, and a one assault charge. And uh, Washington, you know the story. Oh, here, seven separate complaints, civil and criminal. Add it all up. 17 separate females and maybe a total of uh, 35 to 40 grand. And these are only the ones who try to turn him in. Same line every time? Sure, sure. Claims to be Philip Evemont. <laughs> Doesn't even look like him. This guy's maybe uh, 5'11". Evemont's uh, 6, 7, or 8. Uh, this guy's heavy set, paunchy. His teeth are not so good. He's balding. But Evemont has a head of hair like a lion and a set of choppers like a movie star. <laughs> How does he get away with it? They're asking me, Bill? <laughs> it's a crazy world. Mm, just the same, I'd like to pin him down. Yeah, so would I. Just one break I ask before it's too late. Too late? You mean before he gives up the scar? Oh, if I knew he'd give it up, I'd settle for that. You know what I told you over the phone? I'm afraid if he don't, it's going to back up somehow real big. Well, like how? Well, one of these dames is going to see the light and realize what a ride she's been taken for. And she might just get hold of something lethal, like a, a gun or a knife. Put a couple of holes in him. Wouldn't you figure maybe he had it coming? Yeah, well, maybe, maybe. But what really worries me with this guy's history of assault and battery is what he might do if one of them tried to blow the whistle on him before he had a chance to duck. I'm afraid of how far he might go to keep his identity a secret. Hey, sometimes I think I'm getting old. My wife says even, even my worries have worries. <laughs> come, on, come on, let's go hoist a couple of beers in the local pub and congratulate ourselves that as far as we know, oh, Phil the Flash is off the prowl. No, Phil, no. Well, why'd you come up here to my rooms? Why'd you get things? to find out just where we stand. Now you know where we stand, Athena. I don't. No, I mean, first of all, I thought we had a business. 
business arrangement, but but now... All right. Now what? Now it's something else. Something I... I'm just not ready for, Phil. Oh, come on, come on, Athena. You've been building up to it all day since lunch, and dinner was the clincher. Now, why do you think I cut our night out short and brought you back here, huh? Well, I thought at least it was to talk about my career first. Ah, you've been hinting at a lot more than that, not only tonight, but all week. You just don't understand me, Phil. I understand that you don't trust me any way at all. I never said that. If you mean the money, it's just that... But it's all I have. Everything seems so expensive, and, and it's all so rushed. Now, you thought you'd just make a little play for me and see if maybe I wouldn't foot the bills, carry the ball all by myself. No. No, that's not what I thought. Sure, sure. Maybe it even went a step further. You thought, why don't I go for the whole ball of wax, tie the sucker up completely, make him marry me so I got a real lock on him? Oh, I didn't. I, I did no such thing. Are you going to tell me that wasn't what you were after tonight, making sure I was single, lining up a photographer to take a picture of us? I didn't order that picture. Or maybe you had... Now, what do you think you could do? Hold me up for another little bundle to hide in your security blanket? I don't know what you mean. How could I hold you up for... Oh, I see... You lied. You are married. Well, that wouldn't make any difference to you. Nothing you could do about it anyway, since I was smart enough to pack the photo away in my wallet. All right, babe. The party's over. Out. So, it was all true. You were just using me, just trying to get money out of me by pretending that I could be... I'll bet you're not even Philip Eve Mott at all. Okay, that's enough. Out. What? Wait, wait, you're nothing but a cheap con man. I bet this isn't the first time you've done this sort of thing. I ought to report you to the police. And maybe I just will. Now, wait a minute. Not on your life. I've seen all I want. Yeah. No, Phil. <clears throat> Whoever you are, let, let me go. Not until I get my wallet back. What are you talking about? Now, you know what. Don't try to act innocent. Now, give me that hand to no, I, I don't have your wallet. You, you put it on the high boy there. Yeah. Where is it now? I don't know. What are you doing? I'm looking for my wallet and that picture you thought you were so smart getting. You can see it's not in my pocketbook. All right. Where have you got it? I haven't got it. Have you gone crazy? I want that picture. I haven't got it. If you come any closer to me, I'll scream. Oh, no, you won't. You're going to keep your mouth shut. Keep away from me. Huh? Oh! I told you to keep it shut. No, no, I... Now, where is it? Ow! I have a you, you bit me. No, I don't. Be quiet. Just be quiet, be quiet. That's better. Okay, now, come on, don't try to fool me. Come on, where is it? Where's my wallet? Athena? Athena. Oh, no. Oh, good Lord. I can't have. You can't be. You can't be dead. Experience is a matter of instinct about life said Oscar Wilde, or words to that effect. No one is more experienced than a veteran police lieutenant. And Lieutenant Matthews' instinct was right. Lou Richmond has finally gone too far. But will he get away with it? We'll find that out when I return shortly with Act Three. At the climax of Gilbert and Sullivan's operetta, The Mikado, the three principles sum up the dramatic tension of the moment in these statements. Here's a howdy-do, here's a pretty mess, and here's a state of things. Now, I don't think Lou Richmond could be so polite and contained in his quandary. It is, after all, one thing to have an angry, disillusioned woman on your hands, but quite another to have a dead one. Oh, wait a minute. Is she really dead? We didn't stop quite long enough before to find out, did we? 
I never figured anything like this to happen. I just never figured it. I didn't choke her all that much. Maybe when we fell, somehow her neck... Oh, what's the difference? She's dead. I gotta get out of here. No, 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 wait a minute. Now oh, the wallet, that picture, that's her only tied to me. I gotta find that first. And let's see, where, where, where could it be? It's crazy. I had my wallet when I came in here. I put it on top of the high boy there. Not, not back, under, it's not anywhere. Now, what could have happened? Now, let me think. Let me think now. We came out of the restaurant. I was putting my wallet in my pocket. Maybe I dropped it there. Or maybe in the cab. Or, or getting out. Yeah, getting out. That must have been it, getting out. That's what it must have been. It sure ain't anywhere in this suite or I'd have found it. Well, kiss your luck, Lou Richmond. And hightail it out of here fast. <laughs> the beers, Mike? Uh, no. Wait till I answer the phone. Uh, Lieutenant Matthews here. What? Where? Dead? Well, is there any idea? Hmm. Athena Blackwell. Yeah, okay, okay, I'm on my way. Well, you don't have to tell me, Mike. Forget the beer, huh? I'm, uh, I'm sorry, Bill. My precinct, some dame. Homicide. You know, you can't argue with the big M. You, uh, want to see how we handle it in Fun City? Why not? I didn't plan to go back to D.C. until tomorrow. Busman's holiday, eh? Well, uh, homicide's never any picnic. But, you know, I got a, get a funny hunch about this one. Maybe you ought to drag along. I knew it, Bill. I could just smell it. Here, you see this? Uh, registration? Yeah. Guess who? No. Yeah. Philip Evemont. Well, there's no chance it could really be. No, 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 no. Not, not. I just checked the West Coast. Now, I knew he was there to accept an award, but, you know, you, you don't take chances. I called and I talked to him. He's there. So this is our boy again. Our boy. Just like you pegged it. It got out of hand for him. Yeah. Looks that way. You got any leads? No, no, no. Same description. He uh, checked out a couple of hours ago. The night maid came by to clean up and uh, discover the body. Well, there must be some way to identify him. Fingerprints, the desk clerk, or something. Uh, well, we'll try, but uh, right now I can't imagine what we could dig up would ever put him on the spot. Who is it? Who is that? It's all right, Phoebe, honey. It's just me. Lou? Who else? All right. I didn't expect you back until late tomorrow. Yeah, well, uh, my plans got changed. My uh, my business was all finished, so I took the chance to get on home to you as fast as possible. What's the matter? One of your lady loves walk out on you? No, it wasn't like that. I just wanted to get back home. You what? Oh, that's a switch. Now, look, Phoebe, honey, I'm sorry. You know, I'm, I'm tired and it's late. Let's not have any go-rounds, huh? Give me a break. A humble Lou Richmond. What happened in New York? Something go wrong? No, 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 no. It's just, uh... Uh, I've been thinking. I've been thinking, hon. Maybe I do spend too much time away from home. Tomorrow, I'm gonna tell the office I've had it with the road. It's time I stayed home more, mended a few fences. They don't need mending, Lou. They fell down a long time ago. Well, maybe it's time you and me started rebuilding them? It's a little late for that. <sighs> maybe it is. I guess we have to wait for tomorrow and the future to find out, huh? But tonight, I am so tired, honey. I'm good for nothing. I just want to hit the hay and maybe never wake up. I slept like I'd had knockout drops and woke up feeling not much better than if I had. I grabbed some O.J. and left for the office. But first, I headed for the out-of-town newspaper stand to pick up a news and a Times. The story was in both of them. Buried in the right-hand bottom of the Times' first page. It splashed all over the news with a picture of Athena they dug up somewhere. But only guesses about me. Nothing about the wallet. 
the next day, it was inside the Times, but still on page two of the news. No mention of the wallet. By the end of the week, the Times had forgotten it, and the news had a small squib that police had no clues. The wallet was gone, disappeared. My prayer had been answered. It's just that he... Lou's been so good to me the last few months, Dennis. Oh, come on, Phoebe. Now, look, if he has, there has to be a reason. That crumb Lou Richmond never stopped operating a day in his life. You mean... You mean you're giving up the idea of any divorce action? There's just no way I could go ahead with it now. Uh, what do you mean, now? Well, in three months, he hasn't made a road trip. He's working right here at the office in Cleveland. I have his number. I talk to him every day. And he's home every night. Just like it was when we were first married. You're making a big mistake. Now, I can see the way you feel, but this guy hasn't changed. Why won't you give him the benefit of the doubt? Because that miserable phony never gave you a break. And he doesn't deserve one from you. I, I don't know what trimmed his sails, but you mark my words, he is ducking something. He'll only be on good behavior as, as long as it suits him. And then he'll be back on the prowl again, and I don't like to see my only sister taken for a patsy. All right, Dennis. I promise you, if the out-of-town trips start again... I'll... Or anything else. You can call in your bloodhounds. But until they do, I'm going to give Lou the benefit of the doubt. The next months really drove me up the wall. The office routine had me grinding my teeth. And all the forbidden women around me with their skirts blowing in the wind really chimed my bells. What was worst of all was Phoebe suddenly making dove's eyes at me again. So I made my decision. It was safe now. I'd gotten away with it. It was time to take the act on the road again. Sergeant Gwynn? Yeah, speaking. Who's this? Uh, your New York buddy, Lieutenant Matthews. Hey! Hi, Mike. What's doing? Where are you calling from? Uh, where else? New York. <laughs> Don't tell me you got a break on our old friend Phil the Flash. No, no, no. No such luck. Matter of fact, there's uh, been no action for nearly six months. Now, I was just sitting here cleaning up the files, and I pulled his. Nothing new at all, huh? Well, not from here. You think killing that girl really brought him up short? Well, yeah, it seems that way. A anyway, uh, we got too much else on the books to keep this active. Now, I'm going to have to bury our friend in the hole file. I hate to think of that bird getting away with murder. Yeah, so do I. But what can I do without any evidence? If I can't find him, I can't move against him. You don't think sooner or later he'll pop up again? Between you and me, yes. Somewhere. Sometime. I just wish they hadn't ridden me off the case from upstairs because my hunch is stronger than ever. What hunch? You remember I told you this boy was headed for big trouble to begin with? Well, now that he's committed murder and got away with it, one will get you a hundred. He's going to try it again. You're not going back on the road, Lou. I've got to. The office insists. Then quit your job. I can't do that. Why not? I have more than enough money for both of us. You've always half lived off me anyway. Well, I'll tell you one thing. It'll never be all the way. I'm not quitting and I'm going back on the road. Dennis was right. You haven't changed. You just can't wait to get back to chasing again where it's safe. Well, you're not going to get away with it. Now, what are you talking about? You go back on the road and I'm going to have a private detective on your heels wherever you go. You so much as look at any other woman and he'll have the goods on you and I'll divorce you so fast and clean, you'll be wiped out. So that was it. She meant every word she said. And I knew right at that moment that Phoebe had to go. I'd gotten away with it once I could do it again. It was just a matter of figuring out how. But Phoebe was as good as dead. No way anyone could stop me. And that's when the roof fell in. Answer the door, will you? Who is it? How do I know? Police, open up. Police? Come on, open up. We know you're in there, Richmond. And don't try anything. The house is surrounded. What is it, Lou? What is it? Well, I, I, I don't know. I just don't know. Well, you better find out. No, 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 don't. We've got to, Lou. <sighs> Excuse me, madam. Detective Archer, Cleveland Police. No, don't you move, Richmond. We got you covered. All right, put the cuffs on him. Handcuffs? What are you doing? Are you, uh, Mrs. Richmond? Yes. 
I'm sorry, but we're arresting your husband. Uh, what's, uh, what's the charge? Suspicion of murder. Oh. How, how did you know? Lieutenant Matthews here from New York will tell you that. But I looked behind the high boy. So did we at the time. We missed it, too. Where was the wallet? Behind the wooden bagging. It was loose at the top. The wallet slipped down inside it, behind the drawers. The hotel just started to redecorate, and when the high boy was moved, they found it. Fortunately, the hotel manager recognized the girl in the picture as the one who was murdered and called the police in. We got your name and address from the wallet, of course. Oh, murder. No, it's exactly what it was, Mr. Richmond. And I'm sure glad we caught up with you in time to make sure you had no chance to do it again. Coincidence. As I said in the beginning, if it weren't for coincidence, half the best stories in the world would never have happened. A picture taken at the wrong time. A damaged high boy. A lost wallet and a hotel's decision to redecorate. If it hadn't been for all of them, Lou Richmond might have gotten away with murder as easily as he did with his impersonation of the famous photographer. I'll be back shortly. A melancholy story. What makes such a tawdry and despicable man? Perhaps all of us must share the blame a little. Day after day, the newspapers chronicle stories of human beings like you and me taken in by the flimsiest of schemes. Why? How? Who doesn't, in his heart of heart, dream of being rich or famous or powerful? Of all the seven deadly sins, greed is the most insidious. But of course, you and I will never be taken in. Or will we? Our cast included Larry Haynes, Marion Seldes, Catherine Byers, Earl Hammond, and Ian Martin. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. I hope you enjoyed this episode of CBS Radio Mystery Theater. If you enjoyed this and want to hear more, please subscribe to this channel. You can also visit my other YouTube channel by searching Mr. Brian McCarthy in the YouTube search bar. Until then... Thanks for listening.